Hello guys, welcome back to the Foolish Engineer YouTube channel. Last time we saw the basic things related to the op-amp and its characteristics. Before watching this video, I would recommend you to watch that video first, for easy understanding. Today we are diving into the fascinating world of the buffer sockets. So let's start. Now you might be wondering what on earth is a buffer circuit? Well, imagine an electronic device that can take a weak delicate signal and turn it into a strong robust input. That's precisely what a buffer circuit does. It's like giving your signal a protein shake and a fancy suit. Picture this, you have a square wave signal of plus or minus 10 volts with frequency of 100 kilohertz. But here's the catch. This signal strength is very poor. It is coming from a source which has a very low current capability, let's say in the range of tens of milliamperes. Now we need to share this signal with multiple circuits like sensors, ADCs and drivers. But wait, each of the circuits has a big appetite of current. When we give this signal to any of the circuits, they'll eat up the signal strength. That's where the buffer circuit comes to rescue, which has high impedance at the input and low impedance at the output. The circuit takes a very small amount of current from the source, ensuring a signal strength remains intact. Now let's dive into a design of a buffer circuit, where we'll select an op amp based buffer using LM7332 IC. This is how a basic buffer circuit looks like. We provide input to the non-inverting terminal of the op amp and take negative feedback and provide 15 volts and minus 15 volts at the VCC and VEE respectively. If you want to use a particular op amp as buffer, then we need to select an op amp based on some characteristics which we saw in the last video. First of all, the op amp should be able to follow the input voltage. That means output voltage should be equal to the input voltage. First is to check that the amplifier can achieve the desired output swing using the supply voltage which we have provided. Output swing of this selected op amp using plus or minus 15 volts power supplies is greater than the required output swing. We can verify it by output voltage versus output current curves in the op amps datasheet. Next, we need to check if the input common mode voltage of our op amp can handle plus or minus 15 volts or not. This range of the amplifier must be greater than the input signal voltage range. This range for this amplifier is between minus 15.1 to 15.1 volts which is greater than the required input common mode range of the design. There is more. We must calculate the minimum slew rate required to minimize the distortion. We can calculate it by using this formula where VP is the maximum input voltage and F is the signal's frequency. So the required value comes as 6.28 volt per microseconds. The slew rate of the selected op amp is 15.2 volt per microsecond. So this is also okay for this application. Lastly, we must ensure our op amp has the bandwidth to handle our signal's high frequency. It's like checking if our op amp can keep up to the pace. The unity gain bandwidth of an op amp is 7.5 MHz and the desired output signal frequency is 100 kHz which is less than this. So there is no problem. And now if you use the same circuit and simulate using this op amp providing 100 kHz This is how its DC simulation will look like, where output voltage is following the input voltage. And if we see the AC sweep, the gain of the op amp decreases beyond a certain frequency. In this case, it would be around 7.4 MHz. Well, that's how we design a buffer circuit using op amps. I hope you picked up something useful from this. The reference of this design is added in the description. 
If you want to see some more videos like this, then please let me know in the comment section. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. It is right next to it. I will catch you in the next such amazing video. Till then, stay hungry, stay foolish.